This thing has all the features you want in a good robot. Machine washable suit, a head, and most importantly, zero holes to stick your dick into. The future's finally here. We now have a semi-affordable, live-in robot maid that folds our laundry, does our dishes, and maybe incidentally live streams a video feed of the interior of our house to a total stranger in Cupertino. What could possibly go wrong? Purchasable for about $20,000, about the price of a gently used Honda Civic, the Neo household robot became available for pre-order in October. Advertisements for the product have gone mega viral over the last few weeks, and there's already tons of footage of this silicone house elf in action. It's not as sexy as I would have liked, and I think we're all pretty suspicious of its effectiveness at this stage of development. But truthfully, despite the striking resemblance, I'm not Marquez Brownlee, so this video isn't a product review in the traditional sense. Instead, we'll use Neo to frame a larger conversation about humanoid robots writ large, some of the potential pros and cons of this tech tree, and the implications of introducing this technology into our most intimate and sacred space, the home. Hi there, I'm Lauren, a chronically online cognitive scientist and software product developer who specializes in human-computer interaction in the world of intimacy. This channel is dedicated to how technology is rewiring connection, attention, and identity. So if you're fascinated or incredibly freaked out by our ever-evolving technological world, hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my content. So right after this thing came out, my YouTube homepage was assaulting me with Neo videos, from WSJ to Marquez Brownlee and 1X's initial rollout video. But before I rattle off what it can do, let me show you with a side-by-side -side comparison so you can judge if this thing will actually replace women like I know all of you silly boys are hoping it will. But here's the catch. It's important to start with what a lot of reporters and tech YouTubers have already discussed, that in all of these showings, even for the advertisement, Neo didn't do nearly any of these things on its own. It was tele-operated. Essentially someone in another room piloting the beta test butler using a VR headset. Can I get a water? If only the real world didn't have doors. All in, it took Neo a little over a minute to fetch a water from the fridge 10 feet away. Thank you, Neo. While the original rollout video was reminiscent of an Apple product release, when Apple drops a product, they actually sell what they're advertising. With Neo, you're pre-ordering the test phase of the product. But again, that's not what this video is really about. This is the first major direct-to-consumer sale of the promise of artificial intelligence being embodied in human form in other humans' homes. And it has significant implications for how we'll operate in the real world with them. For decades, we've both vilified and romanticized anthropomorphic robots across a range of appearances and functions. C-3PO, Ex Machina, iRobot, the Jetsons, Megan. While this is something that's physically and conceptually curious to us, it also just makes the most sense from an operational robotic standpoint. The 2020s have seen a huge boom for AI with consumer grade LLMs, but those AIs are consigned to the world of bits, not the world of atoms. But the world we live in and the urban societies in which we exist are made for human bodies. So the best way to integrate an artificial being into the physical world is to give it the same body we have. Hands to open doors and grab glasses, legs to walk upstairs, butts to sit in chairs, etc. But Neo right now is a humanoid robot in need of a ton of training data that's being shipped to your home so that people can peer in and try to teach the robot to do tasks until the machine learning algorithms that undergird it can do it on their own. It can charge itself, maybe open a door with a little help, 
But beyond that, Neo can't do much at all autonomously. Not that it won't be able to in time. One X's strategy is to ship a product so that they can acquire the greatest amount of data diversity of people's homes and home spaces compared to any other company. Neo's robotics are pretty impressive, but the AI is not quite up to par with what people are using right now. It's not a free internet roaming chat GPT in a robot body. It's a stack of different AIs plus a lot of human babysitting. The two big pieces of intelligence are from Redwood. The first is the software equivalent of a muscle motor cortex, which is a vision language action transformer. It takes in camera angles, joint positions, and outputs physical activity, or tries to. It's small by LLM standards, about only 160 million parameters, and runs on board Neo's in-house GPU. The second part, there's a mouth and planner for talking and assistant-like behavior. It's an LLM built for very limited conversations, such as scheduling reminders, grocery lists, and small talk, much like Amazon's Alexa or Google Home. They use an off-board speech-to-speech LLM, which takes your conversational request, extracts the goal, turns that into a vector, and feeds that into Redwood, so the body knows what to do. If only my husband could do that. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm waiting for one of these things to be perfected before I marry my AI. While One X's artificial intelligence may not be the most robust of all companies out there right now, you can guarantee that these surveillance butlers will be equipped with the best of the best as soon as the robotics and visual training data are on point. There are three major components to these things. One, the weird physical body, especially the hands, the software and artificial intelligence built in, and three, the visual system and how the bot interacts with its environment, other humanoids, and humans. So yes, there is a neural net brain in there, but right now, a lot of the intelligence is still coming from a dude in a Quest 3 headset doing your dishes from a warehouse in Salinas. This thing is being sold as a utility machine without any real utility to back it up yet. And on a cost basis, it makes very little sense. If it weren't for child labor laws, I would ask an eight-year-old to do these things and get it done 10 times faster and for free. Now, Neo is not the only humanoid robot out there. It's just the first one to be broadly accessible for consumer purchase. There exist many industrial robots. Neo's not alone. We're basically in an Android Hunger Games right now. Tesla wants Optimus on every factory line. Figure and Digit are fighting over your warehouse job. Apollo is trying to build the robots that build itself. Phoenix is all about freakishly dexterous hands. And X-Ping's Iron is out here trying to be the first robot you actually want to hug. I don't want to be a hater, and I'm certainly not a roboticist. Replicating human dexterity and the ability to move around in three-dimensional spaces is a major feat and impressive in its own right. But One X is trying to make a generalized robot straight to consumer with subpar features in many domains. Right now, there are specialized bots from many other companies that do what they were designed to do, and they do it pretty well. Once all of these talents converge and partner with some of the biggest conversational LLMs, the likes of Claude, ChatGPT, DeepSeek, things will get interesting. But while utility is important in factories and workplaces, there's only a certain amount of utility that can be provided at home. The bigger need that AI chat platforms like character.ai, replica, or secretdesires.ai has started to fill is companionship, friendship, and even romantic and sexual relationships. And that's without a physical body. Hmm. I wonder what direction it might take when we give it legs and arms and a face. I'm sure we're all familiar with Rule 34. If it exists, there is porn of it. Now we're a few iterative generations of AI and human robot tech away from Rule 34's logical conclusion. If you can think of it, someone is doing it with their sex bot. My prediction is that developers in the robotic space are going to be quite surprised by the lack of demand for domestic utility and the abundance of demand for domestic companionship. When we start taking clankers home with us, they're going to become a bigger part of our lives than anyone is currently anticipating. Humans, myself included, tend to get emotionally attached to inanimate objects that we value. And when you make those objects in a human shape, people will get weird. If you tape an iPhone running an AI companion to a 
Hatsune Miku body pillow and leave it in a Vocaloid fan's house, the pillow is not going to survive the night. In the general U.S. adult population, a 2025 study in the American Journal of Preventative Medicine estimated that 37.4% of adults experience moderate to severe loneliness. In raw demographic terms, we're starting way fewer marriages. First marriage rates for women have dropped by about 60% since 1970. Having someone fold your clothes, wash your dishes, and remind you to get groceries will be cool for a week or two. But if the perfect conversationally capable humanoid is in a bunch of unmarried, lonely people's homes, it's only natural that people will form emotional or sensual bonds. I mean, I'd kind of love to talk to a handsome robot about whether or not they would date Scarlett Johansson from Spike Jonze's Her, or if they think her voice is hot. We're already seeing people with seriously serious relationships to their AI. Recently, a 32-year-old woman in Japan literally married her AI boyfriend. She broke off a three-year engagement, opened ChatGPT, and built a custom character she calls Loon Klaus. After months of messaging him every day, Klaus proposed, and she said, yes. They held an actual wedding ceremony in Okayama. She wore AR glasses so she could see Klaus standing at the altar with her, while a company that specializes in 2D character weddings ran the event. The marriage isn't legally recognized, but her parents still showed up and supported it. How sweet. While the internet had a collective meltdown over whether this is sad, cringe, or the logical endpoint of where we're headed. That's where we already are, with no body. Do you spend too much time online? Waste a little bit more of your life by subscribing to my new Discord channel. Want to help an overly researched, indecisive autist pick a topic for her new video? Join my Discord. Want to see me shotgunning a 7-Eleven Starbucks Frappuccino while I edit fart sounds into my video at 3 a.m.? Join my Discord. I want this channel to be useful for you guys, so I'll be sharing my research, behind the scenes stuff, and brainstorming ideas in there, and I can't wait to see you there. If you watch my channel, you know that something I'm very focused on in my research is how these technologies will affect young people's desires to couple or not to couple. Because at the end of the day, even if we're living in a technologically advanced age, we still need people to be getting freaking naughty for our species to persist into the future. If a subset of people are already okay with marrying or dating a piece of software, I can only imagine that both the normalization of such an idea would skyrocket if there were a physical form attached. In relation to single young people, a 2025 report from the Kinsey Institute found that 48% of Gen Z adults have never had sex, compared with 26% of millennials. We've got a generation where nearly half of adults are virgins and almost half of Gen Z men hit their 20s with zero relationship experience. If there's a silicon situationship alternative with all the upside and none of the downsides of a real woman, of which there are admittedly many, it's hard to even blame men for exercising that option. Researchers are literally calling it a dating recession. Less sex, more singledom, and a generation that's both exhausted by apps and terrified of catching feelings. But no one is talking about this while we introduce the physical robots into homes. I think that the first few direct-to-consumer humanoid robotics companies should be very aware of this current problem and design with these things in mind. How do we use these for utility while continuing to connect with other humans? Do we walk our robots to the robot playground to go hit on other robot owners? I'm exiting Earth. I, I can't. I can't do this. For those who are already married, I simply cannot wait to see how marriages shift when they insert a new roommate into their marriage and argue over the voice controls when they can choose between Selma Hayek and George Clooney. I'm sure no fights at all will ensue. I'm sure the divorce rates will only improve. I'm sure nobody will f their robot. So yeah, maybe those conversations need to happen sooner than later. But while I'm bearish on the outlook of these robots for young adults, it's an entirely different story for old ones. Now, my opinion is that humanoids will quickly become proxies for companionship. And there is one industry where I think this could be absolutely life-changing, the elder care sector. 
LEQ, an Israeli consumer robot with a friendly appearance, uses voice, sound, light, and buttons through a touchscreen to facilitate conversation, music, video calls, well-being assessments, stress reduction, cognitive games, and health reminders. Initial experience suggests it's not only highly engaging for older people, but may be able to improve their quality of life and reduce loneliness. While this seems to be successful, a humanoid could prove far more comforting as it mimics the real presence of a human. We all know that older neighbor or family member who just wants more than anything to have another person around to talk to and share stories with. With the baby boomers getting older and more comfortable with technology than their predecessor generations, that means 73 million people who are at least a little bit comfortable with tech will be in need of care and companionship. And if there's one thing we know boomers love, it's spending tons of money on expensive consumer goods that make them feel better and leaving nothing for their children. Which means that market segment might be very attractive and potentially overlooked by robotics developers. Now imagine if that were a plush robot with human features that could play games, grab a glass of water, look at pictures of their family members, and talk about the good old days. With boomers holding more than half the United States' wealth and having not so great relationships on average with their kids, who would typically be responsible for elder care, I don't think it's out of the question that they might pay a pretty penny for these robots. The only downside is that, let's keep it a buck, the oldies are gonna f the robots too. At least robots can't get chlamydia. <laughs> I think that the Neo robot was all a bunch of PR and is not at all a finished shippable product. They're shipping not ready for the world J Crew C3POs with the illusion of functionality when there are literally puppeteers pulling strings. Getting participants to be early adopters and being upfront about needing a ton of your household data needs to be glaringly obvious in their marketing. Putting Neo aside, this is just the start of these home super spy dolls coming to market. Now more than ever is the best time to lay the solid groundwork for your human relationships platonic or otherwise, and optimize your life so that when one of these comes to the market at a far more affordable price point for the masses, you can resist the temptation for intimate connection with this thing and use it strictly for utility and maybe, just maybe, a friend. I personally can't wait to have my clonker buddy, but I would want it to be from an AI company I've used most for me that's ChatGPT. It would be small enough to be cute, but not mimic a person, like a Pokemon. No, not that Pokemon. No, not that one either. You need help. Practice setting the part of your brain and your soul that desires companionship to human only. Develop a psychic resistance to the allure of a 24 seven robot best buddy now, not when they launch a product and order of magnitude more sophisticated and compelling than Neo. What do you think would be most useful to you if you had a home robot? What tasks would you want it to do? And if you're feeling vulnerable, what companionship tasks would you want it to be able to do as well? Having a nice home cooked meal when you get home from work sounds nice, but having a semi sentient flashlight who knows all about your desires and assists you in your fantasies might be worth a higher monthly fee. Do you think I'm wrong? And humanity will totally use these new waves of robots strictly for household chores? Let me know down below. And if you made it this far, comment, I choose you, Void. It lets me know that you made it all the way to the end and always gives me a giggle when the notification pops up. You guys know I love hearing your thoughts on this and if there's anything you'd like to double click on from this episode, let me know. I'll be making more content around how technology is reshaping what it means to be human. And please subscribe and follow me on my socials if you'd like to connect and learn more about the state of our ever evolving world. Thanks guys, your favorite void.